Good morning and welcome to the Chart of the Week video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Thursday the 27th of February 2020 and the time has just gone 11.45 GMT. And this week's Chart of the Week is the NASDAQ 100. And as you can see here uh, by the chart, the last few sessions have been pretty painful. Um, it was only a week ago we were at there thereabouts, um, an all-time high. And then we suffer, and then since then we've been driving, um, driving powerfully lower, uh, along with you know the S&P 500, uh, stock markets in Europe and Asia as well. Um, and the the video today is all about are we going to see further losses? So you can see here that the last few days' price action has been pretty horrible. We've seen a gap to the downside. That's a, a, a negative uh, a negative sign. We see the market push below the 50-day moving average. Um, even though the cash trading hasn't begun yet, um, <clears throat> the futures implied we, 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 we are going to be opening lower. Um, and we're coming down to an, what's potentially going to be an interesting level. Uh, we can see here um, that this uh, this line here, um, can the lows of there, thereabouts, uh, late, um, late December, early January, there, thereabouts, it's in around 8,663. Uh, keep in mind, we're currently expecting the cash market to open when it does open at about um, 8,786. So we're coming into a potentially, a potentially an important region. And not only does this line uh, kind of tally up, but there, thereabouts, the lows of late December and early January, it also comes quite close to the 100 day moving average, this yellow line along here. And we can see quite a few times in the last eight or nine months, that particular metric, the 100-day moving average, has acted as both support, resistance, and support uh, on a number of occasions. And if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it will be in the future. But obviously, there are no guarantees. So if we do drive on lower from here, we could buy, potentially find some support from this area here in around 8,800, sorry, 8,663, thereabouts. But we might see the, the market um, break below that. And should that be the case, we could be looking heading down towards this line here. And that comes into play in around 8,454. Or this entire zone could act as support in around 8,854 down to the 8,400 mark. Because we have seen some consolidation in this region in like November and December. So these are the areas to keep an eye out for to the downside. If we do have a snapback, in the in the um in the nasdaq 100 where can we potentially run into resistance we could potentially run into resistance in around this zone here in around the 9000 mark it's a big psychological number uh if, and, and if you go beyond that we could then potentially encounter resistance on this blue line here the 50 moving average uh, and that comes into play in around 9110 and it's only really if you get back above that and ideally on the on a daily basis close back above that could then we begin to think you know what this recent downtrend has come to an end and we're looking to continue on in the wider upward trend but we're still quite away from that so if if you do happen to get back above the 50 day moving average and close above it then we could think you know what maybe the downtrend has come to an end and then maybe we could be looking at retesting the lows here from last Friday, uh, where, where the gap was traded in around 9,404. Now, if you are going to be trading um, the, the NASDAQ 100, it's worth keeping keeping an eye on other markets. This here is the S&P 500. Uh, and as Dow Theory, one of the tenets of Dow Theory is that the averages must confirm each other. And what, what that essentially means is that if you if you feel our market's moving in a certain direction, you'd also want to see other markets that are that are similar or highly correlated also moving in a similar direction. And we talked about how we a gap was created on the Nasdaq 100, and that a gap has been created on the S&P 500. We talked about how the Nasdaq 100 is driving lower and is below its 50-day moving average, as is the S&P 500. What's interesting though is that the S&P 500 is firmly below its 100-day moving average, and it's not too far away. From its 200 moving average so the s p 500 is in worse shape than the nasdaq 100 but nonetheless both markets are driving lower therefore you can be more confident that the kind of that the the downward trend in both markets is going to continue but obviously there are no guarantees 
Um, so, so if you are trading the Nasdaq 100, it is worth, worth your while keeping an eye on what's going on on similar markets. Finally, if you are going to be trading the Nasdaq 100 or any of the uh, US stock market indices or any even of the European in indices, it is worth your while noting that at 13.30 GMT today, half one UK time, we have some important economic announcements from the US. We have GDP, we have initial jobless claims, and we also have durable goods. So that is likely to uh, inject some volatility into an already quite volatile trading session. Thank you for listening. Have a good trading week and good luck.